Today I will be presenting a VAP on febrile seizures. After viewing this VAP, you should be able to classify febrile seizures as simple versus complex, understand the epidemiology of febrile seizures, and describe the prognosis and recurrence risk of febrile seizures. This VAP will cover the definition, epidemiology, diagnosis, management, and prognosis of febrile seizures. Multiple definitions of a simple febrile seizure have been put forth by various organizations. For the purpose of this presentation, I will use the definition of the 2008 AAP practice guidelines for the long-term management of patients with febrile seizures. Febrile seizures are generalized seizures that last for fewer than 15 minutes and occur only once in a 24-hour period in a febrile child with a temperature greater than 38 degrees Celsius. There can be no evidence of intracranial infection or metabolic disturbance, and the child must not have a history of seizures when afebrile. Complex febrile seizures are any seizures that occur in a febrile child that do not meet the criteria previously described. Specifically, they may last longer than 15 minutes, recur within 24 hours, or have a focal component either during the seizure activity or in the post-ictal period afterwards. It is important to differentiate between simple and complex febrile seizures because the recurrence risk and associated findings are different. Febrile seizures are the most common seizure disorder of childhood and occur in 2 to 8 percent of children by the age of 6. The variation in prevalence likely relates to different case definitions, demographic factors, and ascertainment methods. There is an age-dependent onset of febrile seizures, typically between the ages of 9 months and 5 years, with the peak age of onset being between 14 and 18 months. There is often a family history of febrile seizures, with 10 to 24 percent of patients having a first-degree family member with a history of febrile seizures. Most genetic studies have found a polygenic inheritance pattern but a small number of families have been found to exhibit autosomal dominant inheritance. Additionally, 4% of patients with febrile seizures will have a family history of epilepsy. Between 30% and 50% of patients will have recurrent febrile seizures during subsequent febrile illnesses. Risk factors for the recurrence of febrile seizures will be discussed shortly. There is also an increased risk for febrile seizures after DTP and MMR vaccines. The increased risk of, for febrile seizures with DTP was on the day of the vaccination, while the increased risk for febrile seizures after MMR was 8 to 14 days after vaccination. Of note, the DTP vaccine is no longer routinely given as the DTaP vaccine with acellular pertussis is now widely available. Simple febrile seizures are the most common type of febrile seizures and typically account for about 75% of cases. Complex febrile seizures are more unusual, with seizures found to be prolonged in about 9% of cases and to be focal in less than 5% of cases. Seizures do not always occur at the same temperature or point in a fever curve, even for a given child. Additionally, febrile seizures can occur with viral or bacterial infections, though there is an increased risk of seizures specifically with HHV6 infection, as evidenced by a febrile seizure rate of 13% in one study. Most febrile seizures occur on the first day of the illness, and the seizure can be the first indication that the child is ill. Of note, patients who present in febrile status epilepticus, seizing for more than 30 minutes, have an increased risk of meningitis. The diagnosis of febrile seizures is typically a clinical one. Routine laboratory workup for febrile seizures is not indicated, except as needed for evaluation of the fever. Specifically, routine LP is not recommended unless there is clinical concern for meningitis, a history of incomplete immunization, or the patient is already on antibiotics, which could mask the development of meningitis. Routine laboratory workup, including complete blood count, electrolytes, blood sugar, and renal function are very low yield except when there is clinical concern for dehydration or edema is found on exam. Brain imaging with CT or MRI is not indicated for patients with simple febrile seizures, the urgent brain imaging should be obtained in patients with disproportionately large heads, focal features of the seizures, persistently abnormal neurologic examination, or signs of increased intracranial pressure. Finally, EEG is not indicated in a neurologically normal child, 
with a simple febrile seizure and does not predict the likelihood of recurrent febrile seizures or the development of epilepsy. Treatment of febrile seizures mostly consists of using antiparetics to control the fever. Any seizure that lasts more than five minutes or results in compromise of the circulatory or respiratory symptoms should be treated with benzodiazepines. Preventive anticonvulsant therapy is not recommended and doesn't reduce the risk of development of epilepsy. Of note, oral diazepam administered during the first few days of a febrile illness does reduce the recurrence of febrile seizures. In general, the consensus is that the benefits of anti-epileptic drug therapy in preventing recurring febrile seizures are outweighed by their numerous potential side effects. Prognosis after a simple febrile seizure is quite good. Neither a decline in IQ or learning ability has been noted in patients with simple febrile seizures. There is a slightly higher risk of epilepsy when compared with controls, and there is a significant risk for recurrent febrile seizures, with an overall recurrence rate of about 30%. After a complex febrile seizure, there is a significant increased risk of epilepsy. Children with abnormal neurologic development have a particularly increased risk. Higher recurrence risk is associated with several characteristics. Age at onset of first febrile seizure is prognostic, with recurrence rates of 50 to 65% shown in children with a first febrile seizure before the age of 12 months, as compared with rates of about 20% in older children. Other factors associated with an increased risk for recurrent febrile seizures include lower temperature at the onset of the seizure, family history positive for febrile seizures, and complex features. Factors that are associated with a substantially greater risk of later epilepsy include the presence of complex features during the seizure or post period, a positive family history of epilepsy, an initial febrile seizure before 12 months of age, delayed developmental milestones, or a pre-existing neurologic disorder. The risk of developing epilepsy increases with the number of complex features of the seizure, with 49% of children whose features were focal, prolonged, and recurred within 24 hours developing epilepsy by adulthood. In summary, febrile seizures are common and usually benign. Workup should be dictated by the symptoms associated with the fever and not the seizure itself. There is a significant risk for recurrence after having a febrile seizure, and chronic preventative therapy is not indicated in most cases. I would like to thank my wife, Dr. Anna Dolner, for her help reviewing this presentation.